I didn't have any union representation. I didn't know anything about it. So I started pursuing the city of Stockton by phone. I didn't really know how to get here. Even I was living in San Jose at the time. And I got hold of a person that was running uh, the local casting uh, and tied up with the Chamber of Commerce and the Film Commission, such as his, what, his name is Larry Luttrell. And it took me about, I don't know, six weeks of constantly harbor, you know, bugging him on the phone and to get, uh, to get him to give me a chance to work with him on a non-union shoot. And uh, in August of 1973, he gave me a call and said, um, I, uh, <laughs> I got a job here for me if you want it. It's, uh, it's on a picture called Pursuit with Peter Fonda. It's tomorrow on uh, Monday and the Sunday. So I, I took the call and I, I made my excuses for a part-time job that I had to get off. And I showed up, and uh, the movie uh, ended up becoming the title picture called Dirty Mary, Crazy Larry with Peter Fonda and uh, Adam Rourke. It was a chase movie. In fact, it's kind of famous for chase movies. What year was that? 1974 they released it. They made it in 73. It came out the summer of 74. Anyway, I got on the set the first day, and I played a cop. They had me fitted in wardrobe, and we sat around, and uh, I... I had never been on a set before. I really enjoyed it, and everything was new to me, and I was just eyes and ears. And I got to meet um, uh, Ken Toby, who was the, the one of the other leads in the picture. Uh, Ken Toby was the lead in a movie called The Thing in 1951, famous sci-fi movie, as well as a lot of other pictures, but he was kind of a sci-fi guy back in the 50s. And uh, he was very, very helpful, liked to talk, and so it was a lot of fun besides... Being on the set for the first time, I could talk to people that I never had a, a, any kind of inkling of what they were doing or what they were like. I had a lot of fun. Uh, I had an 18-hour day, and I got paid a flat $25. <laughs> and it didn't matter. I, you know, I was not married, didn't know kids, and I had an education, but really no place to go. So um, in with that, I got called back on that show uh, several other times. I worked probably a total of 14 days over a period of eight 10 weeks and uh, I had a little bit in the picture and some stunt work and it was a lot of fun and uh, you know everything's all new I had no life what I found out while I was here is that Stockton was called at that time Hollywood North and I said what wow and they said that they had a the city of Stockton had a reputation of being really friendly very available for locations and buildings at no cost and complete freedom to shoot and use the police as they will for movies and the people that come here from LA, they had direct routes from Burbank into Los, uh, to, to Stockton they had at that time. And it was like a regular deal. Everybody knew everybody. I was amazed. And uh, it was real friendly and familiar. So I was impressed and with the people here in the city of Stockton that were already had kind of secondhand, you know, firsthand knowledge of what it was like in the business. And it gave a lot of people, especially college-aged people, a chance to work non-union extra and find out what it's about and decide maybe in the later part that they want to pursue that. So um, it did with me. And, uh, you know, then I ended up getting calls in other movies of the week and a couple of features. I worked on uh, uh, Four Stars in the Window, Senior Year. Uh, uh, I worked on a, a thing called Death Machines in 1975, which was released in 76 for Crown International. I had a nice little part in that. And uh, I had a lot of fun, and uh, there was so much to do, and there were so many opportunities. I worked with Jack Lemmon in a movie called um, uh, Alex and the Gypsy. They've uh, nicknamed it in the interim Alex and the Turkey because it's not very good, but I had a little scene with him. It was a lot of fun, 1976, and I got to meet a lot of people, and uh, eventually what happened in 75, the, uh, I had a reputation. People knew me. And then Larry called me and said, there's a picture coming up here in the industrial. I'd like to come up to read for it. And I said, oh, okay, sure. So I took, took some time. I think it was even on a weekend, uh, Saturday morning. I showed up and uh, I interviewed with these people. I got hired and it was, my, it was a union job. And so for this industrial film for PG&E, I got my SAG card, which was like gold because you can't compete as an actor unless you're a union member. So I... I really enjoyed it. I had a lot of fun. I worked about two weeks on it, and uh, I made a lot of money for a single guy, uh, even after taxes, and uh, that got me my card. And from there, I, I went to the union. I went to uh, the the, uh, the agencies in San Francisco. The Brebner Agency became my agency at the time. We had Brebner in 
one of the most prominent, um, uh, you know, uh, casting agencies in San Francisco at that time. And, you know, between Stockton and, and San Francisco, I had work coming in, people calling me. It was a lot of fun. And um, uh, eventually what happened is uh, I got to the point where I really couldn't stay here anymore. And so I, I moved to, from uh, LA, uh, to L.A. in, in, uh, in de 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 was November of 76. Uh, but uh, that was the beginning of my move, but I didn't complete the move till the spring of the, the next year. But uh, basically, I made my move to Los Angeles. And from then on, I... I worked in production and as an actor, a bit player, and then, but, uh, and then uh, I had a life in Los Angeles till about 2013, and my wife and I are both from the Bay Area, and we decided to come up here after our kids were grown, and we came back into the area, and um, I started thinking about Stockton, and uh, what happened is, I, I guess, the, uh, the film commission, as it stood, it fell apart back in, somewhere in the 80s because the people that used to run the film commission um, didn't know how, they, they inherited, the, the job didn't know how to keep the, the, uh, the work coming and schmoozing people and always working it and showing up to location expos and coming down and visiting people. And what happened is the jobs and that, that whole industry faded away and it ended up going to Vancouver. So everything now that currently, that used to come to Stockton is now in, in the Canadian government. And they've been doing it since the late 80s, early 90s. There's been some films that have come here, but the, the, um, the clientele, the regular relationships is gone. You know, people forgot what happened and how good it was here. So and, how can that be rebuilt? Well, um, what I've tried to do, is started in, in uh, September of 2015 with Kevin Dobson, who had come up here in personal reasons. Uh, we started talking because he, he's from L.A., and... I was in L.A. and I kept commuting, going back to work in Los Angeles, uh, was the idea of bringing the film commission back to Stockton. They do have one, uh, but it's not uh, aggressive. It's not overt as far as, you know, getting real pictures and stuff. And I thought, geez, you know, if people knew about this and we could get it reinstated and get the people within the city and the government to act, there could be a lot of, lot of work, a lot of money coming up here and a lot of opportunity. All right, let's go to Kevin. Talk about your history in the film industry and why, what your interest is in coming to Stockton and revitalizing this in Stockton. I don't know how to begin that other than what I'm doing here in Stockton. You know, I'm, I'm more involved with the uh, United Veterans Council now as an advisor. And what the United Veterans Council does of uh, San Joaquin uh, County is pull uh, veteran organizations together where we have a common cause a common goal where we can communicate within one another and still go out and these separate entities raise their own funds and do whatever but we have a common goal you know to help our veterans and adjust benefits and get you were get very better helpful. care hmm? you were very helpful in the patriots ball you were the mc you helped yeah us i'm going to do event. that again at the next patriots ball in uh september it's going to be a huge event here in stockton but, I, you know, I've, I've lived in Stockton now for a year, but I've been coming up here uh, a couple of times a year over the last 12 years. My son lives here and is raising his family. My son, Patrick, runs Lincoln Center down on Pacific. And uh, they have supported our veteran causes. Now, when I got started in the industry, uh, banging around, doing plays, or whatever I could in New York as I started, uh, eventually things matriculated and I ended up going to California to try my hand not being able to get anything going in New York and eventually it happened with Kojak a big television series that ran for five years and I participated in that for all those shows that starred Telly Savalas now coming off he was coming off a tremendous career as a character actor and here he is doing a television series, and that was my break. And as a result of that, that's starting, I did five years of that, and my own series after that called Shannon, and then a long-running show called Knott's Landing. Uh, so I started in that for the next 10, 11 years, along with Michelle Lee and Donna Mills and, and a number of other actors that come through. It's really interesting, when I was doing Kojak back in the 70s, you know, actors that are more prominent today were getting their start as well. 
I remember standing on the roof in the back lot at Universal with, with this guy, this character guy, and uh, he says, Kevin, I'm really happy for you. I said, thank you, Sly. Uh, you know, what do you got going? He said, I wrote this thing, uh, you know, about a boxer. You know? <laughs> so things like the that. This is history. Yeah, yeah. And, you know, and through the years, you have people that matriculate through when you're doing a series, you know. So as I started to come up here, the first, I'll never forget this. The first time I'm coming across the five, coming into Stockton, or was it the 99? Anyway, I saw the waterfront, and I thought, wow, look at this. Then a big ship in the port. Look at this, man, the whole waterfront here. Why isn't it busy? Mm -hmm. You know, and I was just attracted to it, you know. And as I got around Stockton and seeing various buildings and architecture around Stockton, I thought, cinematically, this place is a gold mine. Why aren't there companies here shooting rather than going to Vancouver, Canada? Mm -hmm. So when I eventually moved here, uh, just before that, Tony and I got together and we investigated what they're doing here about a film commission and why isn't there more filming being done here. So as I moved here, I got more and more involved and we have now had a number of meetings with the city regarding to pr help promote getting the generate, generating hope to get a film commission up and running again. You know, but we need the support from the city to do that in order to entice others from Hollywood to come here, as, as was mentioned by Tony, that this was refer referred to at one time as Hollywood North. And I think that's a terrific title. I yeah. think it's a great title. And it's most a great Stocktonians title. Stocktonians don't know that. I had never, I've gone through a lot of leadership <laughs> things in Stockton. I've never heard it called Hollywood North. Yeah. And it, it's just that in this area, they just are not doing anything about it. You know, and I sit here and I look at it, as Tony and I have discussed many times about why isn't it being done? You know, it's done everywhere else, mm -hmm. it seems, you know, and in tax incentives are better in California. Mm -hmm. You have an availability. It's only 350 miles down the road to Hollywood. You know, that's, that's a day trip, and you set up, and you shoot whatever. You can shoot series here, game shows, whatever. And uh, I think it can generate a lot of income for the city, you uh, put a lot of people to work, especially our veterans. Critical. Yes, that you know? would be awesome. Yeah, well, that was our intention. But as we looked at one another and said, this can be awesome, you know. And we're just waiting for the right to get the okay. To, but we need that support to do that. We want to set up an office. We want to have a, a, a crew ready mm -hmm. so that we can go into Hollywood or various production entities and entice them to come here. And I think we'd be able to do that strongly. And we've set out, as Tony was able to do, set out a budget, what it would cost, how much it would be, you know, tax incentives or whatever, and the tax breaks for the city, the tax breaks for a production company to come in here and do a lot of product here. Although they've passed through here, you know, uh, like Raiders of the Lost Ark, they use UOP. Uh, various other you've heard uh, you heard it mentioned about all the movies that have been done here to date I think it's like 43 movies that have been done here or pieces of it but I think this can uh, this can generate a lot of interest and goodwill and expose Stockton as an up-and-coming rejuvenated city you know I, I think it's I, I think it's terrific. yeah you know, so they have a waterfront they have a marina they have wonderful schools here, and the people are great. And I've, I'm living here now, and I'm looking at Stockton with fresh eyes. Mm -hmm. And I see it all over the place, you know? And the attitude is coming up. Yes. And, th and that's what's good about it, Definitely. you know? And I appreciate your interest. I appreciate the interest of the mayor and on through the city. And everyone is interested in what we've proposed. But there it is. Everybody's interested. Okay, right. where's the next step? Come on, guys. Let's push it forward. So when you say the mayor is interested, I was going to ask you to talk about what happened in those meetings and what the response was from the city. What happened in the meetings was very positive response. As an example, you know, in Portland, Oregon, they had a, uh, they had a series there called Portlandia Cable okay. Show. But it generated hundreds of millions of dollars into the city over a five-and-a-half-year period. I think Stockton can use that. They have a lot of programs yes. that's very positive and, and on the move. Like last week, they had... Foundation CEOs coming out of San Francisco, busload of them uh, that uh, Mayor Tubbs put together and, and showed people around Stockton 
in order to create interest and investment possibilities. But, you know, Stockton is just a quiet city. You know, it's taken a knock, but that can turn around. That can turn around, you know. But it's uh, an agricultural city. A lot of the things that, go, that are grown here d are distributed throughout the world. Yes. This port here is a, an integral port. You know, you, you think about San Pedro in, in, in California, in, uh, in Los Angeles, but Stockton. I mean, I noticed the other day that, you know, talk about railroads. Now, on railroads, you see tracks, and tracks were a, a limited amount of length. Well, now they, they've been able to extend that length three and four times the length of a track to make a, a smoother ride. Mm -hmm. Now, how do you get those tracks here? Mm -hmm. It's got to come through Stockton, mm -hmm. the only place in, in the United States that they can transport that. So Stockton has a lot to offer. Yes. You know? So the city, as Tony and I have had meetings with them, are very encouraged, especially where the monetary benefit that it would come to the city. Huge benefit. But, you know, the last, the, the only information that we get is that they're trying to work it out. You know, maybe it's a county investment. Maybe, you know, d finding the money to support us to go and do that. Well, somebody's got to step up and do it. I mean, it's a, it's just a benefit. Have you tried to reach out to the county at all? In what manner? With the same proposal and discussing to the to the county dignitaries the who they are. Uh -huh. Well, we've been focused right here in Stockton, okay. and they said they were doing that. Okay. So that's where that's been left, but it's okay. been several months. Right. And uh, I'm not in any hurry, but why didn't we do it yesterday? <laughs> you know? And you mentioned veterans. Um, we're the seat for veterans. We have well, over 32,000 veterans in our county. Yeah, there are, yeah, yeah, in the county, it's true. A lot of Vietnam veterans, too, of which I'm a veteran. Uh, 523rd Military Police. Thank I was you with for the direct. Service. Thank you very much for saying that, and I appreciate that. And those of you who are listening, uh, thank you for your service. And Vietnam vets, welcome home. I appreciate your, your efforts. I was in during that time, but I stayed in the States. And we had the wall, the traveling wall was here last yeah, year. Yeah, my grandson and I uh, went down there and read names. It was uh, very good. So there's a lot of interest here, and we can, we can put a lot of people to work. Okay, let's go back to Tony. Any comments on that? No, I, I, I completely agree. It's just a matter of getting people to... Um, take the chance because I've got a proposal for 24 months and what it would take. It's going to take some initial capital to start it, but once we get going, uh, it's just a matter of um, uh, creating those contacts and, and, uh, and, and, uh, and working on them and nurturing those, those relationships. Because people will come, once they establish it and people get used to it, they're going to go, we don't want to go to Vancouver and we can, we can keep the money in the state. Mm -hmm. That would people, be awesome. People can be here for a week and it's real easy to go home as opposed to, you know, uh, and the, the thing that people don't know about Canada, and Canada won't bring this up, is if you go to Canada and work, you work and you, you pay, you, you can, you're going to get an income out of Canada, but you have to pay taxes out of Canada, and then you bring that money back and you have to pay, you have to pay taxes in the, 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 so the United USA. Tax. So you've got double taxes. Nobody wants to do that. Not here. If you're a Canadian um, uh, a citizen, you, that's probably fine with you, but... A lot of people that they, they bring key people from Los Angeles to work in Canada, and they they get stuck financially. So there's well, another when you, reason. When you say key people, how would you describe who are the who well, are key you're like people? Your director of photography. In fact, usually the DP and his camera crew they bring everybody up. They don't just have one person. But let's see, have like a, a, a lead uh, set decorator, one or two people, and then they'll they'll hire six or eight other people in the in the in the in the area. So. Uh, a key set decorator and his assistant will come up. That's two people, and then they'll hire eight. So well, you know, when you have a, a university like University of Pacific and Delta College, mm -hmm. and the programs that they have in media, their media programs, mm -hmm. it's Makes sense. they're concerned about going down the road 350 miles. We can do that right here, mm -hmm. you know, mm -hmm. and keep it here, mm -hmm. and and they can participate as part of their education. Yes, that's yeah. a win-win. Yeah, win-win all the way. And they'd gain experience. Well, it's much easier to ask for advice when you're on the set and you're being paid. Even if you're a non-union extra person, uh, the crew responded very well back back when I started because you're you have an interest. You're working with them, and then then they'll they'll take the time to talk to you. If you're a person on the street, they don't, they can't be bothered. Yeah, it's always fascinated me when you see a close up of an individual, of an actor on a TV set or a movie. 
it's one person you're looking at. It takes about at least 150 people to put that thing together. That's a lot of people to work. Some, some people will relocate, but you have enough here in this area to pull from. Education-wise, mm -hmm. it's, a, it's a career. Awesome. And, Tony, what do you think the initial capital would be to get this started up? What kind of numbers? I, I don't know if I'm at, at leisure to disclose that. I really, okay. I mean, we, we've got a prospectus, and it's with the powers that be, and I, I would hate to um, uh, uh, put, somebody count, put somebody in a box. You know, initially okay. it would sound like a big figure, but over a two-year period, and what we have to do to, to project that? You know, it's really minimal. Uh, all it would take would really be one show to, to get it going and getting up and going and have those relationships and have, they'll have a good experience and they'll come back. The word spreads, plus people want to stay here. They don't want to go to Canada. I, I, no, no disrespect to the Canadians, uh, the Canadian They've government. They've been doing that for a long time. But yeah, know, so I mean, I did movies up there in the 80s. You know, just... Uh, so, I've done five movies up there. So, and it's really, I mean, it's the other place. Everybody thinks of Toronto or they think of Vancouver. And uh, why not think of here? You know, keep the money in the state and keep it local. And there's so much, uh, so many job opportunity uh, for people that live here. I mean, locals, uh, as well as people, young, young people, students, and people that have a desire to work in the industry because the people are here. The, 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 uh, the skilled labor is here, and they'd love to be part of it. Plus, it'll give them something else to think about, another way to look at things. Well, and everything you said sounds completely logical. If you're being double taxed and it's a further distance to bring a crew up there, why go through all of that if you could be here? Yeah. Yeah. Well, but so we, if they, all we're asking is a chance. If we can get this started, I know we'll turn it around. And do you have any um, backers that would help to pay? I have somebody some that I, I'm not at leisure to talk That's about okay. in the public, but I've got a, a finance person that, would, that wants to put money up into a studio here in Stockton, of which we found this place. Okay. Uh, I mean, the hard cash and... Uh, uh, let's not overlook that. The, describe what the studio is. Um, this, here's the person who's willing to do, build a studio, a facility. This person who's in the business and is well known, uh, and he's got uh, several cable channels that he owns, and he owns, um, he just bought a major theatrical uh, distribution group like uh, he got Regal Entertainment uh, Theater Chain, and he bought um, um, what is it? He bought the Weather Channel. Um, has offered through a, a common friend of mine, a, a, a contact, to put a token amount of money into the the city of Stockton and uh, uh, card cash and to build a studio. We have come up with uh, warehouses at the Port of Stockton that have very, very reasonable money that, that really kind of are ideal for people and needs like we have for a studio. Security, uh, freestanding mm -hmm. buildings, mm -hmm. large, very, very affordable. Great security. And, and, and it would be uh, at a very nominal fee as opposed to going to San Francisco, which is uh, punitive at best. I mean, they, they you know, it's a beautiful place, but you're going to pay so much money. And, you know, money talks. Mm -hmm. If there were real deals in the city, uh, there are, but we're not in that. You know, most people can't afford it. Well, the question arises, if, you, if we have an investor, well, why doesn't he just do it? Mm -hmm. You know. Well, the, the counter to that is that he wants to look that there's something else anchoring his investment. If the city will stand with us, employ the, myself and Kevin, give us the money we're looking for, However, we come up with a budget, then he'll know that they're locked. We're, the city's locked in as well as he's locked in. Yeah, he wants to see a path. And so, so he will he not. He will commit, seat. but he won't commit until, until that the, the city decides to do this, uh, with whoever. And then that way he'll know that there's some anchor. There's some way to turn that money around. But he's very interested in a number of reasons. Plus, it's proximity to San Francisco without the cost. And you called it a token amount of money, but I'm sure it's a significant amount of oh, money. Oh, it's a it's a significant amount. I, I'm not too, but I don't, but I don't want to, I don't want to get anybody in a corner. I don't want to no. open my mouth inadvertently in a way to to, to to commit to something that that may be greater than that or less than. And I, I just don't want to do we that. We don't but need to know the no, but but, amount, it's, but it's it's significant. It's not. It's it's, it's not. It's not like him, maybe. It's to it's our community. It's and, a and, huge it's, amount. It, and it's been uh, it's been confirmed on a phone call, and I've got <laughs> letters. So it's, and I, uh, before this kind of like renewed interest came, I called my contact uh, two weeks ago to see if that the interest is still there. And he goes, well, let me know. Let me, he said, he'd let me know in 24 hours. He called me and said, yes, it's a definite. Good. Because he sees the potential mm -hmm. of stock. And 
-hmm. Stockton to me is, is like really inexpensive real estate in a very cheap, uh, I don't mean cheap, but a very affordable talk to, uh, stock option for people in the business if they'll stand and take the ground. Um, I, I see it as a win-win situation, but somebody has to break the mold and, mm -hmm. and do it first. Somebody has to be the pioneer to, to set up the prototype. I think, what, I think Mayor Tubbs wants to do that. Mm -hmm. You know, he's just got to be uh, tapped on the shoulder again. So all we're offering is, um, you know, uh, is a, a great amount of uh, uh, experience, both myself and, and Kevin, his and the acting end. And, and my started off in the acting end, but I'm a production man. I, I, I've been, you know, over 30 years in Los Angeles. I know money and figures and how to get things done. And so the combination of the two of us, we should be able to come up with something that'll yes. work and bring people here. And plus people know us in L.A. You know, and I could use the work. Yeah. <laughs> That's funny. Go back to Mayor Tubbs. So what are the steps? What kind of commitment would you actually need the city to say, yes, we're going to do this and we'll do X, Y, and Z? What are X, Y, and Z? Well, the backing that it would take for us to do it. It's an expense to go and do and show up at, at uh, events and uh, conventions and, and promote Stockton. You know, we're out there. It's like the tourist bureau. Go out there and promote Stockton. But in a film sense and how – and to show production companies how affordable it can be and the benefit it, it gives them. And the steps to be taken is, okay, let's do it. That's the step. Okay, okay awesome. And I agree with you. I think students from Delta and UOP would be all over this. I think people in the community would be all over this and embrace this. So I think once it was here, you'd have no shortage of people wanting to participate. Yeah. Places like University of Pacific, you know, Janet Lee came out of mm -hmm. here, and various others, you know, and great music came out of here, and you know, it's just a this is a quiet pocket. We want to make some noise now. <laughs> Janet Lee came back and and visited our city. We had a, a ceremony down at the plaza downtown a few years back. All right. So, anything else that either one of you would like to add about Stockton or veterans? Well, the veterans, uh, as I was. Uh, constantly learning about the attraction of this area you know building a, a veteran facility more capable of uh, handling veteran issues rather than going to Palo Alto and uh, the the trudge that that involves and the time it takes once you're there you know they put through I don't know 800,000 patients last year and, you know and, and that's a that's a backup it creates a backup I don't know how big it is but we need we need other places, clinics and all. And that's on the boards. They're on the boards. We've heard about it for the last eight years, yes. but it's going to happen. This time Good. next year, uh, probably in the fall, will be uh, shoveled to the ground. That's exciting. That's exciting because I know there's been a lot of issues, especially with the changes in the flood zone. They've had to draft and redraft designs. And unfortunately, it's also taken up a lot of money to do that. And it's delayed things. Yeah, water is a big problem. But that's exciting. So who was at the meeting that you attended yesterday? Uh, the director of uh, hospitals, for uh, VA hospitals for the, uh, Fitzgerald, um, and on down, and his crew. And it was really, it was really nice. It took place over at the American Legion Hall. And uh, the people here in Stockton are so dedicated to this cause. You know, and it's not just veteran issues, but the lifestyle here in Stockton is... It's really nice. I mean, every time you turn around, you're running into another school. <laughs> you know, education can be better here. Mm -hmm. But it's all here. It's packaged mm -hmm. right here, you know, in the Central Valley. It's, and uh, we need better, more higher-paying jobs, but this could bring that, which would be awesome. Yeah, if you're not working over in the port, this could happen, you know. It's not just asparagus. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, asparagus, we used to have 60,000 acres, and now we're down to less than 2,000 acres, wow. which is really sad. sad. Um, what did it convert to? Where did, where did that go? Um, I know? believe some of it is potatoes, um, and we now have a lot of almonds being grown in our community. Almonds is huge. Um, but, yeah, it's unfortunate yeah. that that's lost. And um, I actually interviewed the Zuckerman family, uh, fourth generation of asparagus farmers, and he talked about how with that crop it takes 12 people to get it grown and packaged, that 12 individuals will handle it. 
which is very high labor compared to a lot of other crops mm. that could be grown. Mm. Well, keep in mind that, again, once you see a close-up on the screen, it takes at least about 150 people to put that together. So mm -hmm. that's 150 which people working. Which is a good working. analogy. Yeah? <laughs> it is good, yeah. But the money that comes out at the end of that is a lot higher than what they're getting for asparagus. But I will say that our asparagus that's produced in the Delta, the taste is completely different to what's um, imported from other countries, especially Mexico. And when the growers here have their crop, all of the fine dineries in the Bay Area are contacting him directly oh. because they want the asparagus from here. So one of the advantages of, uh, of shooting here, shooting meaning filming here, you know, you have union and you have your non-union. Mm -hmm. And here we're in an area where we can meld that. Mm -hmm. You know, those who want to get in, get the education here, get the background, mm -hmm. and move forward into the union and the benefits of that. So it's, uh, again, a win-win situation. Yeah, it sounds like a wonderful situation. Um, so hopefully the mayor is able to um, pull some th strings and get things together to make this work because it sounds like a wonderful opportunity not only for the film industry and the actors, but for our community as well, and students and people that would want to participate. We're Absolutely. doing a lot of dollars in commerce to our community. It would give your schools a real uh, sell uh, position because if they could advertise that there's actual film production in the state, mm -hmm. in the school, and they have actual hands-on mm -hmm. apprenticeships, uh, internships, that they can, they can actually tap, that's, that's another selling that's a great point right point. there. And uh, nothing beats experience like practical. You can say, oh, I worked, I was an intern, I worked on a Fox show, or I was there for MGM, or da, da, da. and that goes on your resume. And you, can't, and you went where? You went to school where? Oh, wow. Oh, yeah, yeah. I mean, one of the most famous movies shot here, Cool Hand Luke, I had no idea. I had no idea that was shot here. I was like, I said, you One kidding. of my favorite movies. And then uh, uh, Oklahoma. Shaking it here, boss. Shaking it here. <laughs> Cool. And then uh, it was Oklahoma Crude in 1972 with, uh, with uh, uh, George C. Scott and uh, uh, Slither, which was a kind of a funny chase movie with Peter Boyle. And Fat City with John Houston, 1972. Mm -hmm. There's some really nice pictures that have been done here. It's kind of an unknown, you know, jewel. It, it needs to be rediscovered. I think that people, if they just give it a chance, uh, we, the city, can compete with uh, Vancouver easily. Awesome. And come up with a, a, a situation that'll that'll at least match it financially, and then with the tax incentives, we'll better it, because the rate of exchange is equal. Before, when when Canada used to be two for one, it was two Canadian dollars for one dollar. That that really, not anymore. It's almost one on one. So the savings are not as good. But what you have here is a Double reputation. Tax, though, yeah. Well, so. please. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> if you're Canadian though, you can come here. It doesn't work as such. You get taxed, and that's it. You get taxed once. So, but it's unfortunately, it doesn't work that way when we go up there. And you don't need a passport. <laughs> you know, we have a parade coming up yes. on July 4th. Yes, Wednesday. Yeah, and those who show up at the parade are being given a flag to wave as the floats come by and the parade ensues. It's going to be really nice. Awesome. So if you're interested, those who are listening, you go to StocktonForthParade.com and check it out. And Linda Vasquez is the chair this year. We are still looking for floats and participants. It's free for nonprofits to participate. Uh, you can reach Linda at 361-9422. So I'm glad you mentioned the parade. And it's in downtown. It, it's eight blocks, and oh. it's a wonderful patriotic event. Yeah, it's going to take place in the morning. It'll, start, it'll kick off uh, just before 10 o'clock. And, and, you know, parade is a parade. you got to love a parade, right? Yes. So come and down, cheer us on, and uh, be supportive of what we're trying to do here. And it celebrates our country. It celebrates our city. It celebrates veterans in our community. If you love your country, thank a vet. Awesome. Anything more that either one of you would like to add? I have a new grandson. All right. What's <laughs> his name? <He's> Congratulations. <laughs> Tegan. Tegan Hugh Dobson. Very, Very cool. cool. Awesome. Very cool. He came up with a pair of shoulders he's got. <laughs> oh, yeah, he's only two weeks old. Very cool. Uh, Tony's a new grandfather, too. Yes, first time, first time. Yeah. Lucas, yeah. Lucas, Lucas and how old is Lucas? Uh, let's see, six, six, a little over six months. Awesome. November, tw I mean, 21st last year. So Exciting, exciting. Yeah. Very, very so exciting. And they're both Stocktonians. Yes, yeah. they are. And a lot of doing Stockton. I'm going to watch my son, my grandson play ball over at Sunset. Uh-huh. And you got the uh, club all-stars here. And there's a lot of, this is a baseball mecca, by the we way. We have a lot of stuff. Oh, yeah. Stockton has Two guys just got drafted out of uh, UOP. Wow. That's great. Stockton cool. has a huge amount yeah. to offer. The Kings um, now have 
a basketball team yes. here, oh, which yes. is awesome, the Stockton Kings, and that's new. They're just getting ready to start drafting players. So lots of excitement going on, lots of things. And, and yeah. I like what one of you said earlier, I believe you said it, Kevin, that stop, Stockton is on the rise. You may have said it. Yeah. No, that Stockton it, it, is on the rise, and, well, and that's awesome. And we need projects like this to help propel it further. Well, the other thing we're going to bring up is the NCAA was here last year, the women's, and they had such a good turnover. Mm -hmm. Financially, it opened their eyes. It opened their eyes. Uh, ESPN, which is Disney, mm -hmm. uh, because they say it's not money, but it's always money. And mm -hmm. if you can get the same thing and the equivalent of what San Francisco offers for mm -hmm. a fraction of the, the fee, cost, yes. and you get something equally as good, uh, it's a win-win. And our hotels well, and the, are and not the, as expensive either. No, that, that right. would be hard. That and would not be street. hard. The yeah. NCAA is coming back. Not yeah. this, but after this season. Mm-hmm. For the next couple of years, they'll be here. And Amgen was just here. I got yeah. to participate and help with that with my Rotary Club, and that was phenomenal. And they're planning on coming back next year also. Yeah. Bright news. So that's exciting. Yeah. All of that is really positive. It is. It is exciting. And it's, on, it's, on it's on the up. You know, I mean, the city of Stockton went through a bankruptcy. Mm -hmm. Come on. Not no, very long ago either. No, but it's turning around, and uh, I'm glad to be a part of it. And whatever we do, you know, small, large, or whatever, you know, it's, It'll it's make a good a place to live. It's good quality. No, I mean, uh, it's just uh, people don't know. I mean, it was a joke when I was back in the 70s. I said, where are you going for work? I said, I'm going to stock. And they go, where? Mm -hmm. What? You're going to do what? You oh, know. they didn't know. And I got cast out of one thing in San Francisco to work in Stockton mm -hmm. on uh, Bound for Glory back in 1975. It was really bizarre. And they said, oh, we're shooting in Stockton. I said, <laughs> They said, is that a shot? I said, no, I've been going there for a couple of years. We're the 13th largest city, but no, people don't hear yeah, about the amazing yeah. things. Yeah. What, 1,200 miles of waterways? <clears throat> you can go from here, get in your little raft or whatever it is, and go to San Francisco and <laughs> yes. sail under the Golden Gate Bridge. Yes, you can. You know, it's really a yes, fascinating place. And we're close to Tahoe, so we're sure. close to skiing. Um, That's part of the attraction of about filming here also. You know, you do, what is it, an hour and a half away? Mm -hmm. Two hours? It's right there, sitting here. Waterways and buildings. And, and Reno is not far either. So and within the community, the, within the housing community, you have different styles of homes here that are fascinating. Mm -hmm. You know, you can go down one street, it could be a New England location, you know, and another Midwest. You know, it's, it's the area around UOP is beautiful, very classic homes, um, some Victorian style homes in different parts of South Stockton. As you said, we have a wide variety of architecture, a wide variety of things that are offered here. Cinematically, it works. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yep. Well, the first movie of the week, one of the first movies of the week was about the, um, the, uh, the uh, shooter that was out of Austin, Texas. It was done here at UOP. Mm -hmm. And so, check it out. A. Martinez was the lead, and, you know, they stayed here in the state instead of going to, 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 to Texas. So. Well, and earlier we were talking about all the King's men, and I didn't realize how long ago that was filmed here, um, but our Stockton Hotel, yeah. Was, was a big part of that and um, everyone that's a movie that people have all heard of and it has a huge legacy and now hopefully we can restart that legacy again in Stockton be a wonderful thing and it also That'd gives awesome. people a sense of history and pride I mean yes. everybody knows about the farming okay mm -hmm. the school but 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 filming why not arts mm -hmm. because uh, we need to put more money I think back into the arts mm -hmm. and, in, and encourage young people to take a life that way mm -hmm. And we've yeah. had a strong sense of jazz. I'm sorry, I cut you off. We've had a strong sense of jazz in this community, but we haven't had a lot recently cinematically. No, I was going to say, you know, the people in Stockton are really terrific. As an example, my son Patrick, who runs Lincoln Center. You know, you see in parking lots wherever, you know, for pregnant women only or whatever other signs. He's established and put in signs that says, for veterans only, thank you for your oh, service. Oh, that's awesome. Yeah. Bravo. That's excellent. Yeah. Awesome. I didn't know he did that. That's wonderful. <laughs> cool. Well, Very thank cool. you for this opportunity to uh, hear our voice to the ears of Stockton, and hopefully uh, we keep moving this forward. Hopefully. And I appreciate both Tony and you coming out today and talking about this because it sounds like a wonderful opportunity not only for our city but our county and the residents and that it could potentially not only improve cinema, but bring lots of dollars to our community, which is important. Amen.
Amen. Everybody just needs a chance and, and to give people hope. Uh, and, uh, you know, there's a, an, an incredible amount of people here that would just like to uh, put their, 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 their toes into the water to mm -hmm. see what it's like. Mm -hmm. We found that the, the most uh, reliable people were young people mm -hmm. and retired. Them, uh, husband and wives would come out there. The kids are gone and they'd show up and they, they had a ball. And you have this whole uh, roster of people like it always called. They were always here. They never had an excuse except uh, they were looking for coffee. That's about <laughs> it. But they, they just had a ball. You know, I learned once uh, uh, a phrase, commitment to a goal is not a sometimes thing. You just got to continue to work at it. And the goal of uh, Stockton is to turn the city on the upscale, and we just want to be a part of that. Amen. To yeah. me, persistence is everything, and, and just showing up yeah. well, is half the battle. It, it, I find it fun, you know, phenomenal at the, to the latter part of my life to come back to Stockton where I started. And when I brought this up with my wife, and she goes, what? Because she never, I mean, we were married. She didn't know my story in stock. She had no clue. And so I told her about the history. And she goes, hey, you're up here. Maybe you want to think about bringing it back. And I said, oh. And then, you know, one thing led. We started this uh, September of 2015. And I brought it up with Kevin. And one thing led to another. And now we're here. That would be you know, so this cool city should have, full circle. you know, there's so, there is a number of restaurants around here that I've discovered, especially on Fridays, mm -hmm. clam chowder. Mm -hmm. There are a couple of restaurants that they could have a terrific competition going mm -hmm. on here. Bud Seafood Grill has Bud Chipino seafood. also. Right? Yeah, and these other little places. Lumberjacks. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I love that place for prime rib and stuff. But, hey, hit Lincoln Center. It's what's happening. That's where Bud Seafood Grill is. It is. It's awesome. We have our Stockton Host Lions Club meeting there every week. Awesome restaurant, awesome facility, great service. And it's okay. in the Lincoln Center where your son manages. So. Yeah. <laughs> Terrific. Well, thank you again. All right. Well, thank you both for being here. I'm going to go ahead and sign off. I am the voice of Stockton. You are the voice of Stockton. We are the voice of Stockton. Let's make it a great day. Uh -huh.